God deserves all the praise. There is no shadow that has ever overcome your light. There is no rival that could ever stand against your might. You've always been with us. Every battle you've already won. Yes, you've already won. There is no weapon that has ever left a mark on you. There is no army with the power to conquer truth. You've always been with us. Every battle you've already won. You've already won. Come on, let's lift this up together. Come on. Show me.
died in my place Jesus, you're everything to me You came and gave your life And now I lift you high Jesus, you're everything Oh 
As we walk through this life, just with the cares of life, what hope do we have to know that Christ will return? There's a verse I just want us to list up. This is the second verse here. I want us to just sing it together, just with this hope. And every prayer we pray in desperation. The song of faith we sing through doubt and fear And in the end we see that all was worth it When He returns and wipe away our tears In the chorus And there will be a day when all will bow before Him and there will be a day when death will be no more. Standing face to face with He who died and rose again. Holy, holy is the Lord. Holy. Time, let's sing it. 
let's tell him he's holy. Holy, holy is the We honor you today. We come before you with open hearts and open minds and spirits that want to be changed by you. I know we can't wait for the day that we get to see you face to face. But for now, we want your presence in our lives, in everything that we do. In every moment, help us to bring you in, to invite you in. You'll never push your way in. You're just waiting for an invitation. I pray that you're with us today. The word that we're getting ready to hear, that it penetrates our hearts in the way that only you can do. I pray over this service, over everyone who can hear my voice. I pray blessings on everyone in your holy, holy name. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Give somebody a high five. Have a seat. Tell them you're glad to see them. If you're at home, give somebody a high five. We'll wait. Go ahead. Just kidding. Good morning, everybody. I'm Pastor Cassie. We're so glad you're here with us this morning. It is a beautiful day in the kingdom of God. Can I get an amen? Yes. Doesn't matter what it looks like outside. It is a beautiful day with our church family, and we're so glad to share today with you. I want to take a second to remind you to fill out those connect cards if we can pray for you. And I tell you, we do pray specifically for you. We see those prayer requests every week. We pray our hearts are for you. We want to come alongside you. So tell us how we can pray for you. If you want to get connected, any of those things, do it on the connect card. You can use the seat back in front of you connect card or the online connect card at the Bridge NC app or on your app, your uh, online website. You can use all the options. Fill out one, but you can use all the options. All right, so I want you to use that as a connection to us. Tell us how we can help you, how we can pray for you. We're here for you. If you're a first-time guest, thank you for joining us. We're so glad you're here with us today. We have a special gift to put in your hands if you'll take your Connect card to the VIP table in the lobby. Also, if it's your first time here today or within the last month or so, we won't count days, but in the last month or so, we want to meet you after service. We have what's called guest gathering where we have really yummy treats and wonderful people that you get to meet so you can learn more about the bridge. Just make a couple of connections. We're here for you. Uh, we wanna do that after service today. So please come join us. We would love to meet you, put names to faces, all the good things. So let's make sure we do that today, guest gathering. All right, there's so much coming up that I wanna share with you. Ownership is next Sunday. Now, ownership is where you have the opportunity to learn more about the bridge, learn more about why we do what we do, how we serve God, and how how to become an owner here at the bridge. We don't have members, we have owners and we want you to be one of them. So if you're interested in that, use the connect card or you can use the registration link online and we will gladly come alongside you in that and teach you everything that we know and feed you good food. You see the theme here, like there's food involved in all the things, okay? But I promise if you're fasting, we will accommodate you. So just let me know. So like Pastor Ryan, he gets to go to guest gathering today, but there are some really yummy sweets and he doesn't get to have those, so... You can have them for him. It'll be perfect. Yeah, that's right. He'll, he'll stand there and watch you eat them. <laughs> All right, we also have baptisms coming up. If that's your next step, if you've prayed recently to receive Christ or if you're following him again anew, we wanna celebrate alongside you. Baptism could be your next step. You can fill that out on your Connect card and we'll follow up with you or you can do um, registration for that as well. That's up and that's February 5th. Do not miss that opportunity. It is huge for us to celebrate life change here together. We wanna do that with you. It is 
big. We want to celebrate big. So we're going to do that. And we already have one. And so we need more. We want more to come alongside this person and be baptized along with her. So let's do that if that's your next step. And finally, and I'll stop talking, I promise. Bridge groups. Registration is open now. I'll be in the lobby after service with a table. I want to tell you, somebody said something to me last week. They were like, you know, I, I enjoyed listening to the, the January 1st sermon because it reminded me that the people that come up here on stage or the people that you see wandering around that are like bridge staff, we're not perfect, not even a little bit. We are just as human and just as fallible as everybody else, but you know what helps us get through it? Being a part of a bridge group, being a part of an accountable group of people, fellow Christians, people that are walking the same walk that we are, and we all come together and we be fallible together. (laughs) But it's really a great opportunity just to make friends, to fellowship with other people, again, have good food because it seems to be the theme, and to learn about God. So don't miss that opportunity. I'll be in the lobby after service. Again, Bridge Connect card, all of that good stuff will get you connected as well. I want you guys to watch the video to prepare our hearts. How's everybody doing this morning? Online, how are you doing? Just give a high five in the chat. I'm telling you, today is gonna be a good day, and here's the reason why, because God is here with us. And if I'm talking to the believers in the house and watching online, God isn't with us because he was waiting here when we got here because somehow this brick and mortar building or somehow the the Cat5 cable uh, that translates online, he was waiting in that. God is here with us because as believers, the Bible says he lives on the inside of us. So when you showed up, you brought God with you. That's good news, isn't it? Because the opposite is true as well. When you leave here, you're not gonna leave God here until next week. You're gonna bring God with you. Somebody needs to say amen to that. How many of you need God in your life? How many of you need God to walk into some of the same situations that you're getting ready to walk into this week? How many of you need the power of God to change some things that are happening maybe to you this week because you and of your own power can't do it? You need God's power to change things, to shift things, to move things around that in your eyes as a human being is impossible to you. The Bible says, by the power of the Holy Spirit, when we believe in and put our faith in the name of Jesus Christ, he lives, the same power that raised Christ from the dead through the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of us. That's good news. Man, I wish we would live like that every day. Sometimes we just need to be reminded of that. Uh, We're in a series called My Best Year Yet, and we're gonna get into that in just a second. Before we do, I wanna take a second just to talk to you about uh, one of the things that's gonna be happening at the Bridge Goldsboro starting February 12th. We are gonna be going to two services on February 12th. One of the the goals that we have this year in terms of growth is for as many uh, guests to come through here as possible. And we have some strategies that we're doing and we have some numbers and statistics and things that we're, we're doing to try to grow the church. But guess what? It's not just about numbers. It's about souls. And every person has a soul. And so we're so excited about the possibilities that when we have God on the inside of us to save souls. Do you know that there's people in our community right now that have never darkened the doors of a church building? What don't you think about that for just a minute? Never even been to church. There's people right now that are broken. There's people that are contemplating suicide. There's people that need a relationship restored and they have absolutely no fix for it. And guess what? You know them or you know somebody who knows them. And what could God do if we got serious about not just coming to church ourselves and leaving, but what if we got serious about saying, you know what, I'm gonna invite somebody that doesn't go to church somewhere that maybe doesn't know that God is the answer. And I'm gonna invite them to come to church with me and hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
What if we got serious about that? What, what could God do, not just in terms of numbers, in terms of growth? We, we don't wanna grow just to grow in numbers. I'm not interested in drawing a crowd. Jesus wasn't interested in drawing a crowd. You know what he was interested in? And the reason why I'm interested in it and our staff is, and hopefully all of us are, he's interested in the possibility of somebody that's broken coming into the proximity of the spirit of God and their lives being changed for eternity. That's what he's interested in. And that's what we're interested in. And so to make room for that, we're gonna be going to two services on February 12th. And here's the times, 9 a.m. and 10.45 a.m. Go ahead and mark that in your calendar. 9 a.m. and 10.45, starting on February 12th. We're gonna be talking about that for the next couple of weeks, but I wanted to go ahead and give you a heads up. As we go forward into that, I want you to ask yourself a question. What if this year, 2023, by the way, January is almost over. Can you believe that? One twelfth of the year is almost gone. That's, that's crazy to me, but it's still January, so we're still asking the question, what if this year, 2023, was your best year yet? Meaning that what if in 2023, you as a Christian, as a believer, experienced the power of God in ways that you've never experienced him before? What if you were able to draw closer to God in 2023 than you've ever been before? and you were able to experience his blessing and his power in your life like you've never experienced before, would you get to December and look back and say, man, this was a good year. Not just that, I believe it was my best year yet. You know that can happen? That can definitely be you. In this series, we're talking about uh, specific spiritual habits that when we make them a part of who we are, not just practice them a few times to check off a box, but when we actually make them a part of who we are because our hearts are desiring to be closer to God, it sets us up to experience God like that, to draw closer to God like that, to be deeper in relationship with God than we've ever been before. And it's not that we can earn it somehow by doing these things, but it's amazing when you get in close proximity to God, you're able to experience the blessings of him just because we're close. When we get close to God in relationship, when we get close to God because our hearts are desiring him, then we, we get to experience blessings of God that we wouldn't experience otherwise if we weren't as close to him. So the first week we talked about fasting and what that is. And if you didn't already know, our church is, is right about a third of the way through a 21 day fast. And I just wanna encourage you, if you haven't jumped in yet, jump in. Somebody said there's never a good time to get into a fast because there's always gonna be an office party. There's always gonna be you know, somebody saying, hey, let's go out to eat. The best thing to do is just jump in. And I'm just gonna hang here just for a second to say fasting is going without food for a spiritual purpose. We talked about that on week one. Please go back and listen to that message if you haven't already. And the reason why I say please isn't because I want you to hear me preach a message because you're getting ready to hear one. What I want you to do is get on board with what we're doing as a church and set yourself up to experience God's blessings and draw closer to him than you've never had before through fasting. I'm already starting to hear stories of people that are drawing closer to God, that are doing without food for a spiritual purpose. And yes, they're hungry. Some of them are even hangry. I talked to a couple this morning, the, one of the people in the relationship is doing without caffeine and it's, it's a struggle. And the wife said, I'm praying extra prayers for him. And so maybe for you, you're, you're praying those extra prayers, but you're drawing near to God. I've heard stories of people that say, I'm more desperate for God than I've ever been before. Not in a bad way, but because I, I recognize my need for him. It's amazing when, when you get some of the fleshly things out of the way and begin to experience God like that. Not only do you experience his blessing in your life, but also one of the greatest blessings ever is knowing your creator on a more intimate level. Fasting. Uh, that's what we talked about the first week. If you haven't jumped in, jump in. And I'll say this, if you started and you failed, jump back in. I've never seen a coach that uh, had somebody on the field and they failed one time and they said, well, you're, you're out for good. No, it's, it, let's figure out what we need to do and get back in the game. And that's what God is telling you. Maybe, maybe you've decided you were gonna fast a certain thing and, and day two rolled around or day four and you just, you just failed and you're like, God doesn't want me to do this anymore. Let me tell you, you're wrong. God desires your heart. And if you have a heart after him, learn what you need to learn and jump back in. Don't deprive yourself of what God may wanna do in your life through this fast. Amen? We got any people that believe that this morning? Come on, is there anybody hungry for God that wants to experience more of him than you ever have before? Can you just give God an amen? amen. Lord, we need you. 
Last week, we talked about the importance of God's word. And if you want this to be your best year yet, you gotta hear from God. And that means digging in to his word and the importance of God's word. Today, we're gonna talk about another element uh, that I, I believe there's some misconceptions around it, um, but it's something that we all know about at least, and that's this, prayer. How important is prayer as it pertains to drawing nearer to God? Most of the time, we don't think necessarily as prayer being something that deepens the relationship. Prayer is something that we do maybe because we need to, maybe because we know we should, maybe we grew up hearing somebody pray, maybe because we're in trouble and we need to ask for help, and certainly all those things are important. But I, I wanna talk about just very briefly what prayer is, and I wanna make it simple today and maybe approach it from an angle that you haven't heard before. Prayer, very simply, is this. Prayer is conversing with God. Now, you, you've probably heard that before. Prayer is, is, is conversing with God. It's a talking and listening, because that's what a conversation is, right? It's I, I talk and I listen. It's a conversation that happens with God. Speeches don't grow relationships. Don't look at your husband. Just look at me. Wives, husbands, don't don't don't. Don't rib them. Speeches don't grow relationships. Empty phrases that we offer because we just memorized them out of repetition, that doesn't grow a relationship. You know what grows any relationship? Conversations. Conversations grow relationships. And that's really what prayer is meant to be as it pertains to our relationship with God and deepening our relationship with God. Conversations with God. Sometimes we reduce prayers to a speech and we do all the talking Kind of reminds me of a man who went to church one day and he listened to everything the pastor had to say. And at the end of the sermon, the pastor sort of opened up the front for people to come down and have their, their needs prayed for. And so he went down and whenever it was his turn, the pastor said, what would you like for me to pray for you about? And he said, I, I, I want you to pray for my hearing. And without even wasting a second, the pastor put one hand on his head, one hand on his ear, and he goes to praying. And he prayed for several minutes and prayed and prayed for this guy's hearing. And when he got done after a couple of minutes, he sort of stepped back and took his hands off of him and said, how's your hearing now? And the man said, well, I don't know, pastor. It's not until next Wednesday. <laughs> so sometimes we talk too much. <laughs> sometimes we need to do a little bit more listening. And there are times in prayer where you're gonna do a lot of talking. You're gonna be pouring your heart out. You're gonna be asking for help. You're gonna be talking to God. Maybe you're leading your family in a prayer. You know, when's the last time you ever said some things in prayer with your family and said, guys, now we're just gonna sit here for two or three minutes and just maybe see what God wants to say. Some of you feel weird just even thinking about that. Like, how would that play out in your house? You know? But th there are times where we're, we're gonna do the talking. But prayer is this conversation that we're having with God. And sometimes you're, a prayer is something that you're offering to him. And then other times, Maybe it's the next day or maybe it's a week from then. You're opening your word and you're, you're setting aside time to listen to what he would have to say. So not every single session is going to be a talking and listening. It could, but over the long haul of your life, over the, the relationship that you have, it should include both talking and listening. Times where you just have your, your Bible open. By the way, that's how God speaks primarily. Did you know that? Through his word. If you think you heard God say something, God's word will always back it up because his word never contradicts what his voice is saying and his voice never contradicts his word. Some of you, that just cleared some, some things up right there. So you talk and then other times you have your word open and you're, you're listening to what he would have to say. The problem is that, that we're, it's not so much that we're against God speaking to us. We, don't just, we just don't wanna get quiet enough in the day to listen. It's difficult in this fast-paced world. We have things all around us that keep our brains spinning. Phones, man. How many of you have your phone with you right now? Don't feel bad. <laughs> it's turned off, but I, I got mine with me. There are times where we just need to put all that away so that we can listen to God's voice because it's not talking to him primarily only that, is, that encompasses prayer, but it's also listening, it's a conversation. But this is what I've learned about conversations, at least in growing relationships. Conversations in growing relationships, the kind that we should be seeking with God, uh, a growing relationship, those kinds of conversations aren't just about anything. What I've learned about conversations when it comes to growing relationships is they talk about the things that deeply matter to them. No relationship grows deep 
until you talk about the things that matter the most. Husbands, you will never know your wife intimately just because you know her favorite color and where she likes to eat. And on the flip side of that, she will never feel closer to you in intimate, deep relationship as when she knows your fears and she knows what makes you tick and she knows the things that are way down deep in your heart that go beyond the superficial. And those conversations feel awkward at times. In fact, we, we don't typically want to have those kinds of conversations in a marriage even uh, because they're, they can be hurtful, they can be vulnerable, they can, they can feel weird because I don't know how they're gonna take it and they don't know how I'm gonna take it. And so sometimes those touchy places way down deep, which is actual the conversations that spread the, 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 the field in order for us to grow some pretty deep relationship things, but we stay away from those typically let me ask you this, what, what does it take to get that vulnerable with somebody? It's one word, really. What does it take to get to touch on the things that make us vulnerable the most? Yeah, it's one word, trust. Trust. So, so how does this relate to prayer? How, do you see where I'm going with this? If your prayer life is struggling, it's, pr- it's probably not because you're not as spiritual as the next person It could be that you have a trust issue with God when it comes to putting things in the conversation that make you feel vulnerable. If if your prayer life is struggling, if the relationship is only going to a certain depth, it might not be because you haven't memorized the words. It might not be because you haven't attended church. Or it might be because there's a trust issue when it comes to laying on the lap of God the things that deeply matter to you the most where true relationships, deep relationships really happen. You know, I would never invite somebody into conversation for things that matter the most to me that I don't trust. I can have shallow conversations with with you all day long and never grow the relationship by one inch. How you doing? Good, how are you doing? Great, how's work going? Man, it's going really good. There's some this and that's happening. How about you? Oh, it's going great. Thank you, Lord, for my food. Now I lay me down to sleep. Pray the Lord my soul to keep, whatever that looks like for you. Is there any problem with with any of those prayers? No, just like there's nothing wrong with me asking you how work's going and you asking me. But if the relationship between you and I is gonna go deep, deeper than just the superficial, you're gonna have to reveal to me some deep things and I'm gonna have to reveal to you some deep things so that we can get on another level than we've never been before and I I can begin to show you that you can trust me and, and, and I can trust you and then the relationship grows deeper. Likewise, if 2000, 23 is going to be your best year yet because you're drawing close to God and you're deepening the relationship with him, then you're going to have to trust him enough and be vulnerable enough to bring into the conversation things that matter to you the most. You want to experience God in a deeper way in 2023? Write this down. Trust and vulnerability. That's what turns prayer into deep conversations with God. Trust and vulnerability. There was a man named David in the Old Testament. He loved God. In fact, he was so close to God. He had a deep relationship with God. God called him a man after my own heart. Don't you want God to say that about you? Look down from heaven and say, man, she's my daughter. She's got my heart. He's got my heart. That's how close David was to God. And I think one of the reasons why he was so close to the Lord and why David watched God do so many miraculous things in his life and come through for him like he did was because of the vulnerability we see in his prayers, because of the trust we see in his prayers. A lot of those prayers are recorded in the Psalms, certainly not all of them. We get just a touch of David's life and some of the conversations he had with God and some of the subject matters that he touched on. And I wanna talk about just a few of them. Look at Psalm chapter eight, verse one. David said this, Lord, our Lord, your name is the most wonderful name in all the earth. And that's just a touch of that, of that one prayer, of that one song he sang to the Lord. What was he vulnerable with there? He was vulnerable with his praise. He was vulnerable with the complimenting that he gave God. He wasn't scared to share from his heart how good God was. And and we all know that statement is true. God's name is wonderful. God's name is above all the names of the earth. We all know that statement is true, but when was the last time you shouted that to him at the top of your lungs? 
When was the last time you told him, Lord, your name is worthy to be praised. There is nobody on planet earth, nobody in all creation higher and stronger than you. Maybe you know that in your heart. Maybe you know it in your head. And you say, well, God certainly knows my heart. Yeah, he does. But go to your spouse, the deepest relationship you're supposed to have on earth, and tell them I love you on the inside. Don't ever expect me to say that out loud. Maybe some of you are saying, hey, I need to be more vulnerable with my praise. I need to give God the, the honor that he's due. The word says the fruit of my lips will give him praise. That means I'm speaking out praises to you. Some of you have, have never raised your hands in worship to God. I'm not saying you have to turn it into a show for anybody, but what I am saying is maybe it's time. Maybe that's your next step is to, is to break out of your comfort zone a little bit and be vulnerable with your praise. Maybe you, you've never been on your knees in front of the Lord, but you felt like you wanted to. Well, God certainly knows my heart. Yeah, but how vulnerable and, and trusting do I have to be in order to grow that relationship to a deeper level by expressing myself and being vulnerable with my praise? David didn't care. In fact, there was one story where he came into town dancing before the Lord. It was so crazy that his wife at the time it was, was so shocked and embarrassed by what he was doing. And he looked at her and said, it was for God. I'll become even more undignified than this if you want me to for the Lord. Maybe pendulum swung too far the other direction, like don't go home and try that just yet. Maybe you just wanna start with raising your hands and your time with the Lord. He was in his underwear, by the way, <laughs> when he came in, in his underclothes, whatever that looked like back then. But he was vulnerable with his praise. He trusted God enough with, with what he was giving him that it didn't matter to him because he knew that God wasn't gonna shame him. He knew that God wasn't gonna turn it around and make him look stupid. And the relationship grew deeper because he was vulnerable with his praise. Can I just say this? And I say it lovingly. For some people, it's really hard to give anybody a compliment without feeling weird on the inside because you haven't navigated your own feelings enough and aren't comfortable enough with your own intimacy to be able to give somebody else a compliment or get that close to somebody. And if you can't do it with somebody right here, you can see how are you gonna ever be intimate with the Lord in that way and begin to offer his name up, who's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and who died for you. So, so maybe it's an internal thing that you need to work on on you. But I know this, David was really close to God because he trusted him and was vulnerable with his praise. How about this prayer? In Psalm 139, verse 23, he said, God, examine me and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Notice the word test there. He said, Lord, put me on display in front of you and, and tell me what you think. I want you to open me. You already know me. Just show me, show me what it is. See if there's anything bad in me, he says. Lead me in the way everlasting. What was he vulnerable with there in his prayer? Well, he was vulnerable with his plans, his own intentions, his motives. He said, God, I, I want to invite you in to speak into my plans, speak into my motives. I have them, and I'm not just gonna ask you to bless them. I'm gonna invite you in to mess them up if you want to. How vulnerable is it? How much trust does it take to tell somebody else to look at your plans and give them full permission to change them if, they don't, if it doesn't seem right to them? That's different than asking God to bless my plans, isn't it? But his heart was, God, I'm, I wanna be vulnerable and trust you with my best laid plans. The deepest parts of me, God, change them if you want. Find something that's not pleasing to you and change it. These were prayers he prayed to the things that mattered the most to him. He offered them to the Lord. He got vulnerable and trusted God. The relationship grew deep. And it's no surprise that David saw the things that God did in his life. We can read about him in scripture and it's pretty amazing. Look how he started his prayer in Psalm 13. He was going through a particular devastating time Look how he started it in verse one. How long will you forget me, Lord? Forever? You sense a little sarcasm there? How long are you gonna hide from me? You ever started a prayer like that? What was he vulnerable with there? What was he trusting God with there? His hurt, his fear, his pain. He laid it before the Lord. God, I've been dealt a devastating blow and I don't trust anybody else but you to bring this to. And maybe there's some questions that you and I need to work out. My heart honors you. You know I love you. But how long is this gonna take? How long are you gonna 
going to wait. That, that takes some vulnerability. That takes some, some trust in the most high God. Here's the common thread in all these prayers, and there's so many more. I'm just gonna touch on those today. But here's the common thread that I want you to understand about prayer when it comes to conversation between you and God that's gonna make this year grow deeper in him than ever before. He trusted God enough to be vulnerable. It, it was the deep conversations. It was the things that mattered to him the most. It wasn't shallow stuff that keeps it all superficial like we do with other acquaintances. He said, God, I wanna go deep. So I'm gonna trust you enough to be vulnerable to the things in my life that matter the most to me. When he felt happy, he was vulnerable with his praise before the Lord. When he felt sad and, and he, he, he was vulnerable and, and gave that to the Lord. When he felt frustrated and angry and maybe he was even concerned about the things in his life or people in his life, he trusted God enough to be vulnerable with his hurt and with his pain and with his concern and, and fall on his face before the Lord and lay it into his lap transparent. Lord, show me if there's anything in me that you don't see fit for me. And I'll change it. Lead me in the way everlasting. And this is where the conversation takes a turn whenever you get vulnerable before God like that. Look at what he says happens when he did that. It opens the door for God to speak back. Look at what he said in Psalm 25 verse 14. He says, the Lord confides. Say confides. Say it again. Confides. He confides in those who fear him. And he makes his covenant known to them. You can take that word fear and it can be translated revere. Meaning I, I trust you enough to revere you. You don't trust people and then you don't revere people you don't trust. Do you confide in people that you're not close to? Think about that. Do you give precious information that you want people to hold dearly to somebody that you barely know? This is what he's saying God does. He's saying God doesn't just speak back like, oh, this is what's, he's, he's confiding in you when you get vulnerable with him like this, meaning he's going deep too. He's giving you deep stuff about himself and his word that he wants you to know. And he's reserving that to confide in those only who fear him, only who trust him enough to come close and revere and be vulnerable before him. Could it be that there are things in the God's word that he hasn't shown you? Could, could it be that there are things that for your life, blessings that you don't have, things about God that he hasn't shown you yet because you haven't got vulnerable enough and close enough to him for him to confide in you like that. He's always gonna be ready to give you what you need to be saved and to have salvation in your life and make it to heaven. But Jesus said in this life, he said, I came to give you more than just to survive it. I came to give you life and life to the full. And I believe part of that is drawing, drawing so close to God that you're close enough to hear his voice when he's speaking to you, the deep things of God. In 2023, God wants to confide in you. He wants you to draw close to him, to trust him enough, to be vulnerable enough in your prayers that he begins to speak back and show you things that you wouldn't know otherwise. Prayer isn't a speech. Prayer isn't rehearsed lines. You confide deep things. You draw close when you talk about things that matter the most. God doesn't desire you just to show up and say words. And I've been guilty of saying words. What God desires is deep conversation about things that matter the most to you in life. To trust him enough, to be vulnerable enough, to actually go that deep on the subjects. I love what David said, because David took him up on it. Look at Psalm 25, verse one. He said, and you, Lord my God, I put my trust. I trust you enough. Now, I believe God does want this to be your best year yet. And I think part of that is gonna be the deep conversations that you begin to have with God as you begin to sort things out in his presence. But it's not gonna be because you got good at repetition and prayer or what good at what you think he wants you to say. It's gonna be because you trusted him enough and got vulnerable enough to have some deep conversations with the Lord most high. And those always start with vulnerability and trust. Let me ask you, what, what things, what deep things that matter to you the most are you withholding for, from him in conversation? What, what joys are you not sharing with him in conversation? What things about your life, what things about yourself, what things are you struggling with about you 
that matter deeply to you that you're withholding from him because you just don't see the need because we've kind of relegated Christianity and our relationship with God by reading a book and attending a service. We've just kind of reduced prayer to the shallow things. And we say, well, he knows, he knows. I heard a guy say one time he was praying and he was trying to go deep with God and he looked at God and he said, God, you already know everything about me. And God spoke into his heart and said, then I want you to speak to me like I don't. And that's, that's what God is saying to you. It's what he's saying to me. Yeah, I know everything about you, but I want our conversations to be so meaningful that when you talk to me, it's as if I don't know everything and you're trying to fill me in. That's the closeness God wants to have with you. That's the vulnerability he wants you to have. Then get to the place where he's gonna confide in you and show you things about your life. How much better could your marriage be if you trusted God enough to be vulnerable about the things, about your shortcomings, to be vulnerable about being open to change? Which by the way, if you can't get vulnerable with God, who's never gonna fail you, then you can hang it up being vulnerable with your spouse who's human. How much better would your finances be if you included God into, the, into that and was willing to open up your heart and listen when he speaks to you? I've seen people's whole lives be turned around just on that one thing alone because they decided to do it God's way. How much could the level of guilt in you subside about your past if you would bring that before the Lord and think that out in his presence and let his word begin to show you exactly what he thinks about the things you've done and what he did to cover your sin? the deep things. Can, can you see how in 2023 that can fix the things? It can, it can re-aim you and the things that want to trip you up this year? It's not just shallow stuff, man. God wants to go deep. And the problem is not that we don't say enough words. We've got to trust him enough to get vulnerable and talk to him about subject matter that goes deep, that matters. And then get ready to listen because he's got some deep things he wants to say to you. He's got some things he wants to confide in you and make his word come alive to you. So I want you to remember this. Your life should be a deep conversation with God. That should be prayer, a deep conversation with God, not a speech. As I get ready to end, I, I was asking God, Lord, how do you want me to end this? Because not only is prayer supposed to be a deep conversation, but this sermon's pretty deep. Some of us have never even thought about prayer like that. It's been something I do or something that I offer up, but never a conversation and specifically never a deep conversation. So God, how, how do you want me to end this? And, and typically when I get here, I'll, I'll typically tell a story or, or do something to kind of book in the message um, to where it's easy to remember, kind of make the mood light a little bit to kind of land it. Um, but God said, don't do that. This is what God wants you to know today as you think about prayer in your life and the things that you're going through and the things that matter the most to you. This is what he said to me. He said, sometimes prayer isn't pretty. That's what he wants you to know. He gets it. He, he said to me, tell him this. Sometimes the deepest and most effective prayers come from places of deep hurt. They come from the place where you're struggling and, and you can get so vulnerable with trust and so vulnerable before God in times like that when we're saying, how long, God, are you gonna forget forever? How long is it gonna be? It's the kind of prayers where you say, this doesn't feel good. Sometimes those are the most effective prayers. Some, those are some of the subjects and heartbeats that thrust yourself into the deep things of your life in front of God. I said, sometimes it's the prayers where you're saying, my heart is, is breaking. And I'm here today to tell you, if you're not already in one of those seasons, there's going to be times in 2023 where you find yourself in a season like that. And the temptation when we get in seasons like that, if we're not careful, is to stop praying because we're hurting so bad and we think, well, if we're in that situation, then God must have stopped listening to my prayers. When the reality is what God is saying to you is it's those painful seasons where he actually leans in and listens the most. That same man, David, said this in Psalm 34, 18, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted. Isn't that great? Isn't that something? 
He's close. If you're brokenhearted right now, if you find yourself in a season this year where you're like, this can't be my best year yet because I'm so brokenhearted over the things in my life. No, he's saying God is actually close to you when you're brokenhearted. He saves those who are crushed in spirit. And I think the reason why David knew that the most is because he trusted God and got vulnerable when the circumstances got the worst. And he began to realize, hey, the, the same thing he wants to say to you today, you can trust him. He said, I can trust him. I can be vulnerable with him. I've walked through it with him. He said, and I've done both. And I'm gonna tell you, trust and vulnerability in front of God when the season is the worst, that's when you feel the closest to him. That's when you know he's gonna save you. That's where the relationship deepens. Because if people that are broken, people that are in, in a hard and difficult season, if they get one thing right, listen to what he says in, in the verse right before that, in verse 17. He said, the righteous cry out. Those in right standing with God, those who have been, he said, they cry out. They don't keep it to themselves. They don't turn around and run the other way. They get vulnerable. They cry out. God, help me. Lord, this is what matters the most to me. <laughs> I, I don't want to keep it shallow. Hey, how are you? Whenever my heart is breaking, Lord, I cry out to you about the thing that matters the most. And he said, the Lord hears you and he delivers you from all your trouble. That's when the relationship takes on a whole new level of meaning in your life. Cry out before him. This can be your year. This can be the year that you trust him on levels you've never trusted him before in conversation. This could be the year where he begins to confide in you and show you things about himself and his word that you never even thought possible. And I'm just gonna go ahead and tell you this. You, you, you may think you know everything there is to know about God. Let me just blow your box real fast. The word of God says you can't even begin to fathom that means you can't even begin to imagine the depths of his wisdom and knowledge. You know what that means? That means as long as you're sucking in air on this earth as a human being, there's going to be parts of God that you don't know. And some of those things about God we'll never know until we have a glorified body and mind and we're in heaven. But I'm excited to say there are places in God. There's always new places for him to show me about himself. And the, the vulnerability and trust on my part gives him the opportunity to speak those things into my life. Could this be your year where you grow in a relationship with God like you never have before? And could trust and vulnerability be the thing that takes you there? He'll never take advantage. He'll never shame you. He'll never put you down. Be vulnerable with him. Trust him and turn prayer into more than a speech. Turn it into a conversation. Can I pray for you? Lord, you know right now the, the hurt and the pain and the joys, the fears, the excitement of every single person in this room, every single person watching online. You already know it. In fact, we read in your word where it says that you knew every single day before we were one day old, it was written in your book. David said, I can't escape him. If I go up into the heavens, he's there. If I go down to the depths, he's there. It, you're, you're everywhere all at once. You're omnipresent. Jesus said, you know us so much, you've even counted the hairs on our heads. For some of us, that's easier to do than others. But you, the, you know us, you already, you were so transparent. And yet, your word says that we can draw close to you through vulnerability and trust to come to you and talk to you as if you don't know anything about us and you desire a relationship with us. That, that blows my mind. We believe you at your word. And Lord, there's people in the room right now that they've been holding back some things. And right now is a moment, church, for us to go, God, no longer. I want this to be a conversation with you, not a speech. Some people are, are saying, I don't know what to say because I wasn't raised in church. It, it, it's a conversation. It's talking about what matters the most to me. So Holy Spirit, make that clear to all of us. And Lord, forgive us where we've just offered up repetitious prayers. Not that repetition is a bad thing, but it's our hearts behind it that are just spewing the repetition with our brains and our hearts are somewhere else. Forgive us for that. Help us to approach you every single time, Lord, like it's a new conversation. To not just relegate our prayers to you, just to be just some words that we're used to doing. We can't see you with our eyes, so we're just offer it up and know that you're gonna grab it. Help us to approach you as a real being. Show us your glory, God. Inspire us, Lord, with your presence. 
as we draw near to you, Lord, you draw near to us. Let this year be our best year yet, not because we do anything great, but because you show us in your, in your awesome power, Lord, how, how serious you take us when we draw close to you like that. Lord, for some of us in the room or watching online, we've, we've never given our lives to you. Some of us are, are literally going, I, I'd like that too, but I'm still living out in left field when it comes to who has the authority in my life. And if that's you, if you've never given your life to Jesus or you know right now that you need to give the authority making power to him, I just invite you to do that. Would you pray this prayer with me? God, I'm done living for myself. I believe that Jesus, you died for me and you were perfect in my place. I don't come to God, try to be perfect. I, I can never be, but he demands perfection. So how, where's the disconnect? Jesus, I believe that you were perfect in my place. I believe that you shed your blood for me. And now when I come to God in faith that that happened and believe that Jesus is Lord of my life and he's the only way to God the Father, you accept me and you accept his perfection on my behalf. I thank you for that. I wanna live my life serving you. Help me to know what I need to know. I give you the authority in my life. Lord, I pray a prayer of blessing over us as we venture out into this year. It's hard to believe January is almost over. It kind of just shows us how fast time really does go by. And we don't, we don't wanna go another year, Lord, putting you on the back burner. We wanna get to the end of December and say, man, look what God did. So I pray blessing over us in the name of Jesus, wisdom and discernment. Lord, the, the power to remember the things that we talk about when we're together. Lord, speak, Father, when we approach you. Speak to lives, speak to hearts, bless families as you change us any way you want. In Jesus' name, can we get a big amen in the house? Amen. Hey everyone, thank you for joining us today. We're glad that you were here so that we could do church together as a family. We love you so much. We're praying for you. Have a great week.